In this lecture, we'll be covering details about lapse rate, atmospheric stability, and cloud formation. Interestingly, the included activities involve using a model of how temperature changes with height through the atmosphere, so there's some modeling going on as well as empirical data. At the end of this lecture, listening to the other lectures and completion of the exercises, you should have a better understanding of how the temperature of the atmosphere, especially the troposphere, impacts movement of air masses and subsequent stability which, in part, is related to cloud formation. In this lab, we will be using the term air parcel. This refers to a part of the atmosphere that has a relative uniform temperature and relative humidity and can be considered a parcel, separate from the rest of the atmosphere. The behavior of air parcels in the atmosphere generally follows the behavior of ideal gases. As air parcels rise, they expand and they cool. This is shown in the model by the expansion of the cube as the air ascends. Note that the temperature decreases with height. But what about the dew point temperature? The dew point temperature stays the same at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The dew point temperature is a characteristic of the atmosphere at this place in time. And note, when the air temperature and the dew point are the same, condensation occurs and a cloud forms. So what's the relative humidity in this cloud? That's right, it's 100%. As an air par parcel sinks and compresses, they warm. And this is shown in the model by decreases in the size of the oval, increase in pressure, and increase in temperature. What about the relative humidity for this scenario? Would it go up or down? Since the air is warmer, it can hold more water vapor, and the denominator of the relative humidity equation increases, and therefore the relative humidity will decrease. We'll talk about pressure fronts later in the class, but this is an example of a high pressure system, which are usually associated with nice, nicer and drier weather. If we put these models side by side, we can compare the process. Rising air expands and cools, sinking air compresses and warms. This process has important implications for atmospheric events. So how are these models and concepts used in understanding more about weather? To understand the atmosphere and the weather, we need to know the behavior of air parcels as they move vertically through the atmosphere and the conditions in the atmosphere through which the air parcels move. Essentially what this means is that we need to know how the temperature and humidity vary with height in the atmosphere. There are three important terms we need to learn to navigate these concepts and processes. The first is the environmental lapse rate. The second is the dry adiabatic lapse rate. And the third is the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. Let's first start with the environmental lapse rate. The environmental lapse rate describes how the temperature varies. And here's a graph of the environmental lapse rate from Salem, Oregon on April 15th, 2013. There are three sections to this graph. The first section is a relatively constant slope. The value of the slope is called the environmental lapse rate. The slope changes at the tropopause, the boundary between the troposphere and the stratosphere. This is followed by another relatively constant temperature until you reach a point where the atmosphere begins to warm due to reactions between light and oxygen molecules that release energy. Note that it doesn't take very long for the temperature to be downright cold, minus 20 degrees at about 2,500 meters. 
These data are collected twi twice per day from locations all over the world using what is called a radioson, which is connected to a balloon. Here is a sketch of a radioson, which collects temperature and humidity data, as well as altitude data using a GPS. And here is a photograph of a radioson being launched. They're attached to these large helium-filled balloons and launched from various locations across the world. The environmental lapse rate can change from day to day and even over the course of a single day. These changes are usually associated with changes in weather. For instance, a change from a rainy day to a more pleasant sunny day will affect the slope of, these, of the environmental lapse rate. In the next class, we'll be playing around with some of this data for various places around the world. The next concept is the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Adi adiabatic means that a process like the rising of air, as shown here, does not exchange heat with surroundings. So the temperature of the object depends only on processes that are occurring within the object, like the dry adiabatic lapse rate is the rate that dry air will cool as it rises in the atmosphere. This is shown in the model by the expanding bubble of air and drop in temperature. Note that the change is 10 degrees per thousand meters. The dry adiabatic lapse rate is a model of how the atmosphere will change under certain conditions. For our work, we'll assume that the dry adiabatic lapse rate is a fixed value of 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet, which is equal to what's shown on the diagram, which is 10 degrees centigrade per thousand meters. The final concept is the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. The saturated adiabatic lapse rate is also called the moist adiabatic lapse rate or the wet adiabatic lapse rate. The saturated adiabatic lapse rate is the rate at which saturated air changes with altitude. Remember, if the air is saturated, the relative humidity is 100%. And what is the relationship between the dew point and the air temperature when air is saturated? they are the same. Note in this model that as the temperature changes below the cloud at 10 degrees per thousand meters, which is the dry adiabatic lapse rate, above the condensation level where, where the air is saturated and the dew point equals air temperature, the saturated air rate is 5 degrees per centigrade per thousand meters. And that is why we get cloud formation. For our work, we'll use the units 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet for the saturated adiabatic lapse rate. The wet or saturated adiabatic lapse rate is smaller because heat is released during condensation, thus decreasing the rate of temperature change. So now let's use these concepts. First, let's use the environmental lapse rate. Remember, this is the temperature that the atmosphere changes as you move vertically to higher heights. Here's the question. The environmental lapse rate is 3.8 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. If the ground temperature is 68 degrees Fahrenheit, what will the temperature be at 5,400 feet? Here's the equation to use. The change in temperature equals the change in elevation times the lapse rate. The change in elevation is 5,400 feet. The lapse rate 
is 3.8 Fahrenheit per thousand feet. And when you multiply those numbers together, you get 20.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So the temperature at 5,400 feet equals 68, which is the ground temperature, minus the change in temperature, 20.5, which equals 47.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's do an example using the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Note that this problem has a New Mexico flare. Here's a picture of the beautiful Sandia Mountains outside of Albuquerque, New Mexico. Here's the question. A balloon or air parcel of classroom air is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If the balloon is brought to the top of the Sandia Mountains in Albuquerque, what will the temperature of the air inside the balloon be? Assume adiabatic cooling, which means there's no input from the surrounding air mass. Remember, the change in temperature is equal to the change in elevation times the lapse rate, which in this case is the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Here's the equation for the change in temperature, 5400 feet times the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which is a set value, a model value. We get the change in temperature, 29.2 degrees Fahrenheit. We subtract that from the surface temperature and we get the temperature of the air inside the parcel at 40.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Now note, this temperature is only the temperature inside the parcel. It's not the air temperature at the top of the Sandias. That's a very important concept. Now let's look at an example of the saturated or wet adiabatic lapse rate. And we'll illustrate that with this picture of a cloud because it pertains to when we get cloud formation. A parcel of air is rising and expanding within the cloud shown to the right. At the bottom of the cloud, the temperature of the air parcel is 55 degrees. The parcel rises 3,000 feet to its new location as shown. Note also that the volume of that is increasing, so that means the temperature is going down. What is the new temperature of this parcel? Once again, the change in temperature equals the change in elevation times the lapse rate. And in this case, we'll be using the wet or saturated adiabatic lapse rate. So 3,000 feet times the wet or saturated adiabatic lapse rate equals 8.41 degrees Fahrenheit. So therefore, the temperature of this parcel at the top of the cloud is 46 point nine degrees Fahrenheit. We will now look at an application of lapse rate as a means of evaluating the stability of air masses and this will help us determine weather. If an air parcel is displaced vertically either up or down it'll change its temperature due to its change in size or more specifically its change in volume. Remember, when an air mass is compressed, it warms up, and when an air mass expands, it cools down. If you have an air parcel that is warmer than the surrounding air, it'll rise due to its lower density. On the other hand, if you have an air parcel that is colder than the surrounding air, it'll sink due to its increased density. So what does this process of air movement mean in terms of the stability of the air? Stable air is a term given to air that returns to its original position after it is displaced, either up or down. That is, the parcel of air returns to its original position. Unstable air is a term given to an air parcel that continues to move in the direction that it was displaced. Here is an example of how this applies. The environmental lapse rate this afternoon 
is 7 degrees Fahrenheit per thousand feet. So that is the measured temperature of the atmosphere. A balloon of dry air is filled in Albuquerque. The temperature of the balloon is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The balloon is then taken up the tram to Sandia Crest. Sandia Crest is 5,400 feet higher than Albuquerque. First question, what is the temperature of the air inside the balloon? Here's an equation that shows how we do that. The change in temperature equals the change in elevation times the environmental, the dry adiabatic lapse rate, which gives you the change in temperature. And then the temperature of the parcel is the ground temperature minus the change 40.8. So the air inside this parcel, when you got it to send the height at Sandia Crest, would be 40.8 degrees Fahrenheit. If this balloon was released, would the balloon sink or rise? To answer this question, we need to know what the temperature would be at the Sandia Crest. So first, let's calculate the temperature at the top of the crest. The surface temperature is 70 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to use the environmental lapse rate, so that's the change in temperature over height for that day times the elevation change equals 32.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So that is the temperature at the top of the Sandias. So if we release this balloon of warmer air at the top of the Sandia crest, it would be warmer and less dense. So therefore, the balloon would rise because the temperature inside of the balloon is higher than the temperature of the crest, and the air is unstable. We can also use a graph of the environmental lapse rate. This is a simplified graph for determining the stability of air. Here's the question. A balloon of dry air is filled with Albuquerque. It is taken up to the Sandia Crest and released. Will the balloon rise or sink when released? Is the air stable or unstable? In a portion of a sounding, this is called a sounding as well, as, result, as well as the environmental lapse rate, for the weather balloon is shown on the right. First, we determine the temperature of Albuquerque from the graph. It's 74 degrees. Next, we determine the temperature at the crest. It's 52 degrees. Then we can determine the temperature of the air in the balloon as we move it to 5,400 degrees. For this calculation, we used the dry adiabatic lapse rate. The answer is 44.8 degrees Fahrenheit. Since 44.8 degrees is less than the temperature at the crest, the air will sink. And therefore, this is a stable atmosphere and a high pressure air will form, resulting in beautiful weather, which we frequently find in Albuquerque. Here is a nice blue sky. Here is the Sandia Tram that leads up to the crest. So I'm hoping that this lecture, combined with the other two presentations, will provide enough basis to work on the problems. The second set of problems in the problem set involve looking at dew point, rising air masses, and cloud formations. There are extensive directions on those pages that I hope will provide some guidance for completing these problems. Thanks, and please let me know if you have any questions.